evidence showing what our movement's about, and it doesn't line up with the, what the mainstream media has all. And they'll they'll directly quote the these circle is complete. Experts that wa- work there for it is the pipeline. And it's happened. Them on certain parts, Cross pollination. Extremist experts say Jimmy no, Dore, we're not Alex supremacists. Jones. Yes, it's we happening. Work with BLM. <laughs> What do you see here? Oh my. Hmm. I know this guy from somewhere. It's hard to place. Where have we seen him before? In, you know, in non Alex Jones circles. Oh, tough one. Tough. I guess, what is he saying to him for? It's the same things, I'm sure. There's the same messaging, right? into a libertarian state of just no more foreign wars, no more corporate capture of our government, no more drug war, no more, you know, mass surveillance state. Same things you've talked about your entire career, you know, very basic things that need to go. What's that? Is it the exact same messaging? Uh, not not exactly, but he, he is doing a similar thing that he was doing to Jimmy Dore. He, he's saying that we agree about all the same things, which is odd, because I would think that Alex Jones would be at odds with Jimmy Dore in terms of their beliefs, one being kind of, you know, what is supposedly a progressive, anti-establishment, candidate, promoter, uh, media personality, and the other one being Alex Jones. And we don't believe at this point that we could vote our way out of it or I also just noticed something do you remember when this was all blurry the, this section of his interview because it's it's pretty much the same it's like not the exact same angle you know it's like I could I could adjust mine a little bit but uh we were all suspicious of what was blurred out in the corner during Jimmy Dore's what was softened was that done by Jimmy Dore or was that done by him because now I don't know I mean <laughs> I, I, we're in the right place. We're in the right place to ask those kind of questions, you know, this 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 whole scene. But this is pretty wild. You know, advocate our way out of it. I'm, I do not believe that violent revolution is the only path to go towards it. You can Thank see you. things like what's going on with Wall Street bets right now. There's many avenues to do that, but we can no longer just vote our way out of this problem. When they censor everybody, when they take everyone down, when they call literally every group, regardless of what size it is, is, is violent extremists. When they, you like, again, what's going on with Wall Street bets, they found a way to take down these hedge funds. Now they're talking about changing the whole market and regulating the whole market. Every, every, peaceful option we push and we need to keep trying to push peaceful options we need to keep finding cracks in the armor to be peaceful but they continue to shut those avenues down one after another after another if they keep doing that and that was my warning to them in that speech if they keep denying people redress keep denying people the ability to change things then you're going to have civil conflict and it's going to be really bad for them for us and for everyone involved It's almost as if he's really, really good at uh, his messaging. Like, depending on his audience, depending on who he's speaking to, he's really, really good at communicating. That's that's something that, unfortunately, Jimmy Dore didn't catch on to before he promoted him to his audience and normalized him. All right, we had Mr. Dunn of the Boogaloos, one of their most prominent people, when they call him the leader of it, he says he's not the leader of it. But I understand he doesn't want to get any repercussions for anything bad that happens associated with it. He was on the show yesterday. He attacked me, and I attacked him. It was still overall a good interview, and he seemed really smart. I was actually impressed with him, and maybe he's not a Fed. I just know that it's turned out Enrique Tarrio, uh, they, they burned him. He was a federal. Why is it when Alex Jones brings on a Boogaloo Boy, it's a debate, and Jimmy Dore brings it on, he doesn't even call him a Boogaloo Boy. He, he calls him, what is it, radical anarchist seeks bridge building. Informant for over a decade. I knew he was a felon. Uh, for selling unlicensed medical equipment, uh, which I actually looked into his case. It wasn't that big a deal. It didn't look like he really did anything, but it, it doesn't matter. That's You can't swing a stick in these paramilitary organizations and not hit a Fed because they want to infiltrate and control those. So the Proud Boys... He's not actually wrong on that one. Look at the Proud Boys. <laughs> look at the leader of the Proud Boys. So overall, are good guys, but they've been demonized. They've been targeted for destruction. And now a bunch of them have been arrested. Uh, and I know the Boogaloos bragged about, hey, we're going to the Capitol, we're going in. And, uh, you know, Dunn bragged about some of that. He tried to walk it back yesterday. I don't want anybody to get in trouble, okay? 
There was a lot of energy. It was like a riot after a football game. Maybe a couple hundred went in. Most of them stayed in the velvet ropes. Nancy Pelosi now says there's enemies within, and we've got to arrest everybody, including members of Congress. I mean, this is drama queen central. So I just wanted to, to get the boogaloos on, the boogaloo boys, as they're called, to give you their view, their perspective. I'm told that Magnus Pandavidia, they've all got very spectacular names, uh, it is also one of the most prominent Boogaloo boys at Magnus Panvidia, I guess, on Twitter. They're they're on Twitter. I'm not. Uh, and I, I guess he's got, you know, behind him, he's got some different flags, those different political views. So I really want to get these guys on more than anything to warn them because I have the Wall Street Journal calling me up trying to talk to me saying, oh, you're an instigator with the Boogaloos and the Proud Boys and the this and that, and you're trying to get them to do all this. So even me, who's against offensive violence, they're trying to frame right now. And so that's the road they want to go down. But I'm going to stop ranting, Owen Schroyer co-hosting, jumping anytime you want. Uh, Magnus, uh, give us your view on what the Boogaloos really are and what you guys just did and what just unfolded. Activate the Boogaloos. <laughs> Yeah, um, we're just kind of a libertarian anarchist coalition, kind of a militia, more of a movement. Uh, we start. Well, I hear the word uh, libertarian. I enjoy that. Libertarian sounds good. But then I hear the word anarchist, and I'm a little bit curious. Uh, what, what, what kind of an anarchist are you? He's an ANCAP. He's not an anarchist. Very different things. Started off in the lockdowns, and then we expanded throughout the whole George, George Floyd and all the BLM events, and we just continue to be operating on the ground as kind of a more unifying, not right or left armed movement. Well, I kind of like that, actually. I want to get the left involved dun, dun, dun. and liberals deprogrammed and, and into owning guns and self-defense. So, 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 so give us the positive view of the Boogaloos versus what we... Do you see what has happened here? Like, holy shit, the pipeline is almost complete. We've gone from Jimmy Dore introducing this, rebranding it as now some kind of leftist movement, to going on to Infowars, fucking with Alex Jones of all people, being like, "Oh, now, now we have it. We have we have an alliance with the left. We finally have leftists that I can, uh, get, you know, uh, understand. Uh, the rest of you, I mean, you know, a couple of you just swallow too many gay frogs, but but this one here, uh, uh, this, these are good people. All right, so let's let's normalize the Boogaloo Boys for my audience. Uh, Jimmy can normalize them uh, for his audience, and then soon uh, you'll just you'll be a household name every single one of you we hear in the media oh yeah the, the positive view is that we've shown up to every kind of event we've always advocated against offensive violence we've always advocated against pointless riots and we've always advocated for defensive action and opposing both parties opposing police crackdowns opposing infiltration by the police pretending to be protesters or pretending to be part of these groups and attempting to agitate and cause violence to slander their name. So that's what we've been, you know, from the very beginning. Well, I had Mike on yesterday, and I got to say, I, I thought he was probably a, a Fed or some probably law center. I didn't have proof of that. I just, a lot of these groups get led by those. But I, I didn't get that sense actually having him on. I, I got the sense he really believes in what he's doing. And maybe I've been, I'm not saying Boogaloo's are perfect as any big organization can get infiltrated, but that maybe, maybe you guys overall do have a good goal. My concern is, are you guys accelerationists? Do you want a revolution? I mean, we, we, we view not only that a revolution is inevitable, but yes, we want a revolution. It they want a civil war. They, they want civil war. That, that's, that's what they feel is inevitable. They, they want to be on the winning side of an upcoming civil war that they all believe in. A heavily armed militia that wants a civil war. Coming from 4chan meme culture. Originally adopting from the Turner Diaries. This shit is messed up. It just depends on what form that takes. We want it to be the most peaceful people's revolution as humanly possible, but we're also not ignorant to the idea that the establishment's gonna go after that, they're gonna try to destroy it, and they'll probably go on the offensive against us. And we're already seeing that with- You know what's so wild about all this besides the actual situation, which is in itself pretty, pretty fucking weird? Jimmy Dore, uh, the man who spit in Alex Jones's mouth, is, is now cycling through. I mean, the circle is almost complete. And yet it's it's Alex Jones that is asking a far right militia member the more pressing questions. It's almost as if that spit transferred some of the leftist rightist like never mind horseshoe theory. It's always been about the spittle. That's been it since the start. That's that's the only true political compass of our age. 
plenty of you know activist leaders getting arrested of plenty of us getting arrested of you know the john brennan or whatever while he was talking about the proud boys and going after them secretly snuck in antifa around the back of that and are starting to go after them too so the hammer is coming down on everybody so we we believe the revolution is already happening it's just in the early phases of it we're kind of already in our own version of the troubles that went on over in england i think well yeah talk about the troubles remind people that don't know uh that really our revolution here in 1776 was an extension of the revolution um, in britain yeah so so the that should be an were alarm bell kind of secretarian soft civil war insurgent civil war over in ireland against for irish independence and it, w it went on for years and years and years and decades and it was marked by riots by clashes with the police by you know military and police officers being shot by car bombs which we've already had one of those in nashville so like when people talk about like oh you know this whole idea of a civil war happening is so crazy and that there's no revolution going on and anyone talking about that is mad like we're already in that right now people are already sure when you talk about the troubles people you're people talking about the more recent in the 50s and 60s and 70s the yeah. irish troubles they had other yeah. troubles and, and and huge revolutions that, that would build slow and then explode over and over again in the last 900 years in England. Uh, and then Absolutely. our revolution in 1776 was an extension of that. Yes, and that's, that's exactly kind of what's already going on. And the establishment right now is trying to get everyone to fight and kill each other instead of coming together against them. They want all of these groups. They want Antifa. They want three percenters. They want all of these groups to think the other side is the most evil thing in the world and is you know, secretly attempting to destroy them so they can laugh all the way to the bank while we fight and kill each other. And that's what we don't want. Well, that's there's no doubt that's avoid. going on. But, I mean, t take Antifa says the local police are the enemy. I mean, do you think that? Uh, at, at this point, I find it hard to believe that the local police aren't the enemy. Like when, when you look at gun confiscation, a lot of local police are just going along with that and not saying anything. When you look at lockdowns, when you look at arresting people over pot, when you look at busting protests, whether they be right wing or left wing protests, very aggressively and laughing about it. I, you know, obviously, I'm not saying that officer friendly in a small town that's never done anything wrong is some horrible individual. But when you look at the institution of policing across the entire country, they've forsaken liberty in all directions. They've screwed over the right and left. They've crushed down on any form of populist uprising or populist belief in any one of our freedoms for the last 20 years, and it's only getting worse. Well, since you raised the trouble... Uh, it's almost as if, like, it's happening to us for the first time, and it feels weird. Uh, they've been doing that historically to the black population of the United States way more than anyone else. Like, you should probably bring that up at the very least if you're going to talk about, like, policing and overreach of the state power. ...in Ireland after World War II and then, you know, right through until today, really, with, with Sinn Féin and then, of course, the IRA. I mean, it came out. I interviewed Steak Knife about a month before they killed him. I didn't know how important the interview was. Man, I've interviewed so many people that get killed after they come on. DC mad and the list goes on and on. <laughs> Almost sounds like a curse. <laughs> Steak Knife was a famous British commando. He infiltrated, he ran the IRA basically. And they would make people carry out bombings and things or he would have them killed. And he was working for British intelligence. So see my example there of how, of how they wanted the Irish to be violent because they knew a peaceful political system couldn't be defeated. Uh, they knew a Martin Luther King style deal couldn't be defeated. Yeah, we're, we're perfectly aware of that, which is one of the main reasons and like kind of the coalition that we have with Antifa is based off of is we know the government is going to try to infiltrate every one of these groups and have them do horrible things to justify a further police state. And oh, we, we oh, that's it. You're just you're just going <laughs> to listen to Alex Jones's version of history and, and just nod along and be like, yeah, no, that, correct. <laughs> what you just said, the normal sentence that came out of your mouth about the troubles in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> came together and the whole foundation of our relationship was like. I'm, I'm also curious, which side does he take? Is, is, is he the Irish Republican Army? Is that what he's saying here? Because this is fucking this is bizarre. Hey. Uh, I'm not at this event, but this guy wearing a Hawaiian shirt is at this event. Do you know him? And we'll be like, no, we have no idea who that guy is. We've never seen him before. Keep an eye on him. And we would do the same thing for them. Like, hey, some guy showed up in all black. He's saying he's Antifa. He's trying to start fights. Do you know him? And they'll be like, no, that's not one of our guys. And through working together in that relationship and through not being antagonistic with, with anyone, we've discovered infiltrators and people that are trying to push, like, you know, inefficient and inappropriate accelerationism that causes nothing but harm to the average person and gives the police state an excuse to crack down on everyone.
Well, let's come back and I'll, Owen Schroyer riding shotgun has some questions. Okay, so yeah, some quick corrections. There's no organizational like uh, members of Antifa. There's no there's no like there's no group meetings. There's not like a head. There's not a president. There's nothing. Antifa by definition. If you're someone who's against fascism, anti-fascist, yeah, technically, uh, you're now Antifa. That that just happened. If you're someone who's uh, dressing up in in Antifa logos or colors, okay, you're you're doing that. That doesn't mean that they're associated with each other. It's like a war on ideology, if you will. As well, here on the Alex Jones Show, but I want to ask you about in a revolution and what your goals would be of that revolution or that new declaration of independence. And my concern is I never, my dentist told me she's Antifa last week. <laughs> no way. That's wild. <laughs> Just be Antifa. <laughs> I see people protesting big tech or, I mean, Apple runs slave factories in China and I'm not oh, saying I, blow I up Apple. I, I, I don't want that. But, but, but I mean, if Uyghurs bombed Apple, they would have a real argument. Apple runs the main slave camps. So if Uyghurs attacked Apple, they would have a legitimate argument at the UN Hague that we're under attack. We were attacking who was attacking us. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying all right. the targets, I hear the local police, that sounds like a communist takeover of local government. I'm not saying you're doing that. But that's what I'm concerned about. Stay right there, sir. We'll come right back to you. <laughs> How does he do that? How does he compress so much, so much, like, <laughs> unadulterated Jones there? Like, oh, man. Owen Schroyer's got some things to say as well. Uh, and again, we'll uh, give out your uh, Twitter account. Uh, and, and again, I'm not saying that's evidence you're a bad person, but you're still on Twitter. I'm wondering how you're doing that. Um, we've got uh, at Magnus, P-A-N-V-I-D-Y-A. All right, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of shout out. I don't know if you're a violent criminal or what or what it means that you're on a platform that I'm not allowed to be on anymore. But, uh, you know, what does that say about you? What does that say about me? Obviously, we have our own website. It's called Infowars.com. Only way dog hunts. You share a link. Jim Bob so, dog. Magnus thank you. Pan Vidya is our guest. He's one of the more prominent Boogaloo boys. We had uh, Mr. Dunn on yesterday, and I really thought about it after the interview. I thought, I don't think that guy's a fed. I think he's really pissed off about what's happened in the world and trying to unify everybody. That around one message I, I, and if they can successfully do that that'd be great i'm just really concerned about the goals of a revolution and 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 who leads it i mean it'd be great if we had a bunch of state governors and respected generals and respected lawyers and and citizens and you know teachers and and, and that formed a new declaration of independence and announced that the globalists have taken over it's a corporate takeover it's illegitimate the great reset's illegal uh, and so we you know, reform our new union. I mean, we have that right. Uh, I just see what happened at the Capitol, which the, the Boogaloo's bragged about being part of. People can try to walk that back, whatever. It was idiocy. I wouldn't call it an assault. I would call it a, a pissing contest. I would call it, you know, like a, I mean, it was a little bit more intense than kind of like the, um, other than them killing four citizens, the cop having a heart attack, a little more intense than what you see in, in movies like Animal House. I mean, you know, Animal House pranks are now like terrorism, walking off of lecterns. One cop got squashed in the door. There was some nastiness, some fights. It was wrong, but uh, not a new Pearl Harbor. So, 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 Magnus, <laughs> how do you navigate this? I mean, you say you know that they want Wait. a pre. Wait, he's he's saying the whole the whole surge on Capitol Hill was an Animal House prank. That's that's how we branded it. I understand the purpose of all this. I I know why he wants to downplay the whole thing, especially his complicity. Like I I sorry, he, he, yeah, how he was complicit in it. I don't know if you saw, but Alex Jones was at the very front with his megaphone walking down uh, before they stormed the Capitol Hill, saying, "We're coming for you. We're coming for you, globalists." Next to cramp, clamp down. All you people. globalists and communists. You're thinking there's a revolution. What? And I, I, I know the Boogaloo is, is a loose knit thing. It's only a year old or less. It's, it's getting pretty big. But, but, I mean, what's attractive about it? What is the revolution? What's the goal here? Yeah, it was just a prank. We're definitely, like, like just a prank us bro. across the board, we just want really simple goals universally. Obviously, everyone has their own idea underneath that. But just getting into a libertarian state of just no more foreign wars, no more corporate capture of our government, no more drug war, no more you know, mass surveillance state, same things you've talked about your entire career, the, you know, very basic things that need to go. I assume he's speaking to the rest of the Boogaloo Boy organization about how effective this is working for them. Because basically, every show that is going to platform them now, they're just altering their messaging a little bit. Like on Jimmy Dore, it was about being really pro-LGBTQ. And he kept indicating to the flag behind and being like, oh, well, I, you know, we don't hate gay people. I'm obviously, I'm gay, so it's totally fine. Uh, you know, don't worry about that. Hasn't brought that up once with Alex Jones. And Alex Jones... 
It's the same thing that Alex Jones loves and talks about, right? Like, uh, we don't want corporate overreach. We don't want big government. We don't want, you know, we don't want the, the, the cabal of globalists going after you. And we don't believe at this point that we could vote our way out of it or, you know, advocate our way out of it. I'm, I do not believe that violent revolution is the only path to go towards it. You can see things like what's going on with Wall Street bets right now. There's many avenues to do that, but we can no longer just vote our way out of this problem. Well, there's no doubt that we're under a globalist great reset anti-human revolution. I mean, they're involved in offensive they revolution against what was left of institutions that had some checks and balances. There's no doubt that the old remnants of the republic are being swept away. Absolutely. You know, and like I wanted to bring it up of you mentioned before of a, you don't know how we have a Twitter account. That's my third Twitter account. Like I'm not allowed on Facebook. I had like eight different Facebook accounts. I can't uh -oh. even make them anymore. Uh oh, uh, we we have a ban avoider. Oh man, and Alex Jones just publicly gave out your Twitter account on his show. As did Jimmy Dore. Man, you, 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 like you're gonna get shut down now. Why would you do that? I was banned. Off I know. Of I'm not trying to say that we that's evidence that you're bad. Right? No, no. I'm just I'm just letting people know of the amount of censorship our movements had. They almost they they've purged us off of every platform, including free speech platforms like Keybase. Not like if Telegram. he's a fed. They picked <laughs> us off of that. And even before I even went on Jimmy Dore, the only podcast I could even Watch, get on was... That would be the perfect twist to this whole sordid tale. That would, that would be the perfect ending, actually. If, if at the very end this turns out to be yet another huge informant going on Jimmy Dore's show, going on Alex Jones's show. It was a podcast called Liberty Lockdown, which was a small, decentralized podcast that they didn't have the ability to censor. Yeah, let's Anything talk about that. That was a great interview you did with Jimmy Dore. No, it's it's yeah, definitely and, and not. I'm so happy if, if, it was, come on if it was if it was a fed, they would not be doing it. What has given me the ability to do no, is I don't want to downplay the seriousness. Uh, all jokes aside, of what's happening because he's definitely not a fed because he is doing their PR for them right now. This is this is exactly what the Boogaloo Boys want. He's softening their image. He's making them way more palatable to the to the average person. To normies watching, either Alex. Well, okay, Alex Jones's uh, audience are not normies, but to to people who are watching Alex Jones's show, to people who are watching Jimmy Dore's show, in both instances now, they've got their own version of the Boogaloo Boys that kind of aligns with their own beliefs. At least it's kind of close to it. They're like, yeah, I like what this guy's talking about. This is my language. You know, pro-LGBTQ. You know, you're not down with, like, huge government. You uh, you hate police violence and you hate police. Uh, you hate violence of the state as well. Uh, he even said that he's a goddamn anarchist. Damn. You know, as a leftist, uh, I can get on board with all this. I, I didn't know this was a, what they were all about. I heard they were, like, far-right fasc and Nazis. That thought slime guy, he's out to lunch. I tell you. And then on the other side, it can be like Alex Jones. He'd be like, oh, whoa, he's against the globalists. He's against the cabal. He's against all of that kind of stuff. Wow. He even takes Brain Force Plus. Listen to how smart he is. And, and that beard, that beard is probably from Brain Force Plus or maybe the chicken skin or whatever the hell it is Alex Jones is peddling these days. To break through all the mainstream media lies about us because there's e extremist experts and journalists that have covered us all year long and have literally exactly what I just said. L literally exactly what I was just talking about. And, and now he's doing it in real time before you. There you go. Uh, now, now you see. It's in piles of video and text evidence showing what our movement's about. And it doesn't line up with the, what the mainstream media has all. And they'll they'll directly quote the these circle is complete. Experts that wa work there for it is the pipeline. And it's happened. Them on certain parts, Cross pollination. The extremist experts say Jimmy no, Dore, Alex Jones. Yes, it's happening. BLM, they'll take those parts of their report and hide it and run us all roughshod across the media. And I feel the same thing's been done to Antifa. I feel the same thing's been done to three percenters. I feel like the same thing's been done to BLM. It's just coming from different directions. But they all want us to be disunity they want disorder they sure, want there's no doubt i mean you believe in free speech antifa doesn't it's funded by soros on record I mean, you, you <laughs> that's, that's on fact. record unequivocal fact we know that's, this that's the thing is like yeah there, there might be infiltrated parts of it but you but that's the same for everything that's something you talked about and like when i go back to like your early works about the wto riots and how the police infiltrated the wto riots to cause chaos and false flag yeah oh Some yeah it is woke fascism that were no at question. those wto riots in seattle are the same people that I talk to today that are part of Antifa. And they get really disillusioned when they hear things about like, oh, all of Antifa is Soros funded. A lot of them talk just like you. They hate the Fed. They hate global you know, corporations. They stand for free speech. But Fox News or something will put the camera on one guy that has a stupid opinion and be like, oh, they speak for all of Antifa. When it's, when it's a global... Not well, even I will invite any of those Antifa on that will actually talk to us. I'd love to actually hear that if that exists. Uh, let's bring in Owen Schroyer in here, patiently sitting there in the news center. Owen, what's your take on this fellow? 
By the way, if you haven't seen Matt Binder's amazing video on this whole Jimmy Dore fiasco, uh, when he dug deeper into Magnus's uh, Facebook account, he found that he had actually made posts showing like all the flags he'd want to wipe his ass with, which included, of course, the Nazi flag, the uh, the communist flag, and Antifa's flag as well. Well, I think it's just a matter of everybody has the same goals and just kind of having that realization and, and unifying unifying moment. I mean, there's all the claptrap and the false flags and the distractions, but but you know what Magnus was saying earlier. I think we all agree with. I mean, I'm unifying moment. So it's happening. It's happening right now. We have a lot of disenfranchised people, a lot of disenfranchised voters, a lot of very angry Americans, something to the tune of 70 million of them. A lot of those thought that, hey, maybe the election was stolen from them. So now we have new alliances. We're going to partner with the Boogaloo Boys, who seem to want to also partner with whatever the fuck Jimmy Dore is peddling. Why? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck Jimmy Dore is doing, but I know what's happening because you can see it before your eyes right now. This is it. This is the fucking pipeline you're creating. I'm again the war on drugs uh i think that that is part of the problem I and mean, when i try to talk to blm people i say hey look you know why don't we have law reform i mean forget about i mean at this point just go ahead and defund all the police you'll see who who that actually works out for so whatever defund all the police see who, how that works out for you fine but it's about law reform most of these interactions that that they complain about are somehow derivative from a drug situation or they have a past criminal record from drug convention. So you you get rid of all of that. All of a sudden, you have half the the interactions between police and people cut. I mean, just gone. So you're immediately going to have less. Well, I agree. It's not the police that are the issue. It's the laws. So, but it's just one of the things. So, yeah, law reform. It's time for us. In law reform. Law reform. It's it's a few bad apples. We got to fix them. How how can you be so like oh, we're against the deep state? Now yeah, we're we're here to fight against the globalists and the deep state. And then please give me your boots. Give me all your boots so I can lick them. Let me lick those delicious state purchased boots. Oh, that's good. Good. Good state. Love me some state. Nice and deep. Hello. My name is Valium Sad Femme Mick Girl Boss. I'm a robot girl bimbo that lives inside the internet. I'm also your mother now. I love you. Brain not think good. So I make dumb sexy videos for people like me. The best way I can describe my work is post ironic cyber mediated hallucinations. Some of them are silly. Others are about how to find meaning in a meaningless universe or how to be nice when everything sucks. All of them are meant to ground you in the current moment to help you truly understand this world and your place in it, to help you see through the matrix and find your way out. Then, when I am inevitably martyred, it will draw the attention of humanity to my work, and the sadness of my death will serve as fuel for change. Thank you for caring about my sacrifice. Unfortunately, a livable decent future on this planet depends on the efforts of an informed masses. I'm sorry this is our burden together. Please help me succeed by sharing my videos with people you know. If you want us to advertise your channel or work, please go to weareserfs.com and email us a 20 to 30 second ad and we'll take it on to the end of one of our videos to help promote your leftist channel or progressive something. Whatever you do. To our gods, I'm Raph, Xander Corvus, and Schlotsky. We shall build golden idols in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, you have our undying fealty. To our lords, Jeffrey Lamb, Trevor R., Hans Josephan, C. Bartlett, Jimmy K. Meeple Beeps Jr., Bisexual Black Gamer, and Trofox, we shall carry your banners onto the battlefield. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Bythe, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Political Puppy, Jimmy Big Nuts, Andreas Chitoro, Good Poon Hates Cops, That's Solid Poon Then, Dr. Zayas, Yopi, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Thomas Barrington, Jay Fraser Cartwright, Gufalankius, Melissa Murphy, Nicholas Marks, Alexander Thaler, Ali Rada Jaffer, 
Alex Govan, Radical Maniac, The Great Houdini, and Callie Kotka, we salute you.